Hello everyone and welcome to another Tip Tuesday with IndieSoft. Welcome to my first uh, Tip Tuesday actually. Um, it's like the 15th time that I recorded but it's all great. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about, a, in my opinion, a very useful, very uh, powerful uh, module called the Statistics Module. And this Statistics Module, if some of you have watched previous um, Tip Tuesdays, you may remember that there's something kind of related to this, and it's called the history charts. This module lets, lets us do the same thing. Uh, it's going to make us keep track of the, of, or enable us to keep track of key performance indicators um, so that we can, you know, track how much time it takes to perform a turnaround time from a check-in or, or maybe a receiving it and a shipping event, um, how much time it takes to perform a calibration, etc. And the difference between the history charts module and this is that this lets us do that um, in a more automatic, more in a more automated, that's the word, uh, way. So first things first, um, it's possible that a lot of you don't have the statistics module link in your um, template. So the, the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to add that. So we're going to edit the side template in your home layout. And here I'm just going to add a little item called statistics module. And I'm going to, you know, um, highlight all that and right click and go to hyperlink and this is the hyperlink that needs to be entered in the soft statistics all in one word and once we yeah we save that and we'll see that it's here now I do already have some data some statistics entered into the system so if I go and click on select um, using my calibration time if I click on select, you'll see that, you know, I have some, some information here. Um, have a calibration for an equipment that took 30 minutes, half an hour, five hours, yikes. And another one that took one hour. And this is pretty much what it's going to let, let us do. Maybe in some more detail, uh, by grouping data, etc. I will get into this. So the next thing that we need to know is how to configure this. Um, and to, in order to do that, we need to go to the workflow configuration. So I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna show the configuration that I have set up for a, my calibration event, and then I'm gonna jump into another um, configuration, a new one. So in my calibration event, I'm measuring the the time that it takes to perform the calibration. So if I open this statistic type, there we go. You'll see that we have you know one, two, three, four, five fields and an active checkbox. So going over these fields, this is the statistic type, which is simply a name that we're going to assign to the statistic. Um, this is the sorting event type. And here I'd like to make a pause. There's an important distinction um, on the types of statistics that you can generate. You have two main types and what I'm going to call three subtypes. The first uh, type is a single st single event type of statistic. I got it right. Um, which means that we're only going to measure something from a single event, not from two events that might span an amount of time. This type of st um, a statistic has three subtypes, and it's the master usage, the standard uh, start-finish difference, and the total event time. The master usage is going to basically give you one statistic for each master that's been used. It's going to be filled with roughly the same information. The start and finish difference is going to take, all right, when did the event start? What date and time? When did the event finish? Same thing, date and time. And it's going to subtract that, and that's going to be a time. And then we have a total event time. The difference between that and this is that this is going to take the time that it takes to do the event. So if we go and try to illustrate this, that would mean it's going to take either this time or this time, depending on what you wanted to set up. So if you finish the event, say you set this to five minutes and you finish the event, it's going to prompt you, hey, do you want to use the clock instead of that data? Um, and that's going to get stored in a database table, uh, sorry, in a database column. 
um, where it's going to have the time and that's where it's going to read, but you don't need to get into that. Uh, so we know now that this is going to take the time that you were actively inside of the event. Okay. So if I go back here, this is the way I have it set up. I have a starting event type of calibration. So if I go to my equipment, uh, let's go to start to finish. You'll see that I only have one event. I'm, I'm registering the total event time. So if I open my event, you'll see that I have half an hour here and I had one with half an hour and another one with uh, five hours. And then I have these two curious fields, minimum stat time and maximum stat time. Now the minimum stat time is and maximum stat time are gonna serve as filters. We don't want data that's bad. You know, if you take too little in a calibration event, say less than one minute, then that's probably not a calibration that we want to count. If you take more than 60 days for actively performing a calibration in the event, I, I wouldn't think that anyone is insane enough to just go and spend 60 days typing stuff. So we were going to take those as anomalies and we're not going to count them. That's what this is for. Okay. So now that we have that set up, when, anytime we run an event and, um, yeah, anytime we run an event, we are going to get a new statistic generated. So let's create another one for maybe a more complete process. Uh, let me come over here, check in, check out. Okay. So let's say that we want to measure the time that passes between a check-in and a checkout. That's going to be our turnaround time. So if we go here to the checkout event, like I said, it has to be on the ending event. And I'm just going to delete this. You won't get to see it. We can create a new one. So like I said, we need to be on the, on the ending event because that's when the, the statistic or actually that's where all the information is going to be available for you. So if we create a new one, you can select from this drop down and you can even create, you know, a new statistic type. Woohoo. You'll see that it's now on the list and that that just means that that's just an entry. It's a name. So we select the name, say turn around time. My starting event type is going to be cal in. And once we do that, you'll see that the single event stat type gets grayed out. So I'm going to set this to zero in 60 days, just for the sake of, you know, making this um, simple. Uh, we save our event. We reload all settings. All right. So if I go to my turnaround three equipment, let me move myself over. I don't have any event, so I'm going to perform one. Uh, let's do a check-in first, and we're going to do this check-in on the 28th of July. Oops. 07-28-2021. Yes. Nope, I don't care about that. And then today, I actually do the checkout. At this point, we have an entry. Okay. So if we go back to our statistics module, which I inconveniently closed, and I just select the statistic type that I created, turnaround time, or that I used actually, turns out that I have nothing. So let's see what happened here. All right, so it turns out that I had selected check in here instead of, uh, I'm sorry, cal in instead of check in. So I'm just going to save that again and run through the process. And this is the, the, the kind of things that you need to be paying attention whenever you uh, configure the events. So now if I delete this event, let's do it over. I'm just going to do it real quick so we can move on. Okay, so now if we check this, we'll see that we have an event that took 144 hours, and we can actually change that in the options, make it show by days. Six days, beautiful. Now, what happens if I need to, you know, 
you have events that happen before you configure this. What happens with that? Does it go in the ether? Well, we actually do have an option for that. If you click on this guy, you'll see that it says you want to back calculate statistics based upon all equipment and historical event data for these two events. If you click on yes, now I did have other equipment here that had a uh, check-in, check-out cycle. So now if we go to our event, uh, to our statistics module again, um, we can see that for the turnaround time, we now have several entries. We can actually see it in a chart. This is getting the average of my company, but I can actually go and get more granular, try to you know find specific gauges. It's a pretty powerful um, feature, a uh, little powerful tool. So the other thing that we can, um, to, to kind of wrap this up, is the other thing that we can do is that we can, you know, say you have an event or actually a, a, a gauge type that, you know, it's a gauge block in this case and it's taking way too long to calibrate because these are specific outliers and, you know, they're, they're huge and you have to take your time calibrating those and you don't really want to take those into consideration. Well, if we go to, let's see. If we go actually back to my to my start finish uh, or start start finish type perhaps there you go it's of the type gauge block so I'm gonna switch back to my calibration time okay and you'll see here that let me switch this back two hours this guy took the the, the average for this uh, company is uh, uh, 2.75 hours and here we have the start finish type took five hours. What if I don't want that? Well, we can do a filter. So I'm going to do type is um, not exactly and then gauge block. And we also have to allow for empty um, fields. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Type is black or empty. So when we pull that up, you'll see that now you have test for actually let's select for picky company only. You'll see that now we only have the equipment that took half an hour to finish. So uh, you can get a lot more control here. You can do some uh, grouping on this uh, on the screen and the options tab. You can you can do a bunch of things. That I'm just going to let you guys play with it, um, see how it works. Uh, you probably have a lot more data in your installations than I do, um, and that's going to be very useful for you to get a get, get your bearings on how this works so yeah that was it i hope you find this helpful and if you do have any uh questions see any anything that you need more information you can always contact us thank you